Well, welcome to our role of immunity class. I am excited to be able to share this with you. If we have not met, my name is Lynn Morales and I'm a naturopath in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So welcome to all of you for taking time out to join us across the country. I've been a naturopath for over 17 years. So that means that I look at the body from a holistic perspective and I work to identify the root cause of illness. So my passion is actually a modality called body talk. You're going to learn a little bit more about that later on in the presentation. Um, it's also on our, our website, accesscompletewellness.com on our homepage. But my goal today is to help you understand that you have an amazing immune system and to help you lessen any fear you may have around your health, uh, but also to give you some tools uh, to help you support yourself. So let's get started. First thing I need you to know, I am not here to uh, offer any medical advice. Um, I don't treat or diagnose anything. My job is to simply provide you with some information uh, to give you uh, ways to make some informed decisions. Um, one thing you'll know is that we have a bunch of resources that we use to uh, compile this presentation. I'm going to make references to things throughout. You're going to get a playback of this uh, webinar and also you will receive a uh, a link uh, listing of all of these resources that were used. Um, so as I reference things, you can just kind of sit back and relax. Um, but know this, you won't get this playback tonight, uh, even maybe be for a couple days. Uh, so just be patient with us. We're, uh, we'll get it to you because you uh, have already, you know, you've signed up for the call. That's all, all part of it. So we'll make sure we get those resources to you. So your job is to sit back and relax um and and learn and uh, i'm going to share some things um at a level that uh i understand so hopefully uh that means everybody else will be on the, a similar page so uh the immune system it is a complex network of cells and organs um, that actually defend the body against infection so I'm gonna share with you the main parts of the immune system. Boy, it can get really tricky and super intricate, uh, but let me name the main parts. Uh, the white blood cells, um, there's antibodies, um, there's the complement system. Now that's, that's a part of the immune system that enhances the ability of antibodies and uh, certain kinds of cells to clear microbes and damaged cells from an organism. And it actually, they also, it also, that complement system also promotes inflammation, um, which is helpful. And we're going to talk about that. Um, some other main parts of the immune system are the lymphatic system. Uh, I like to call that the, one of the garbage cans of the body because it takes so many toxins and clears our systems out, hopefully. Um, and then our spleen, very important. Also bone marrow and the thymus gland, uh, thymus gland. Um, right underneath your breastbone there. Um, sometimes if you just lightly tap on it, that kind of wakes it up and that's a good thing for your immune system. So I want you to actually, while we talked about that breastbone now, I want you to just put your hand over that breastbone area and you know, you can, you can feel your beating heart, hopefully, right? Um, so we feel that. And, um, and maybe sometimes, you know, you can even hear your heart. So you know it's working, and that's a good thing. But that immune system, it's silent. And even though we're much less aware of our immune system, although lately we're getting very aware of it, <laughs> uh, it's at work 24-7 protecting us from thousands of potentially deadly attacks every single day. And so I'm sharing that with you because I want you to understand how amazing your body is and, and hopefully to lessen any concern that you may have that your body's not doing its job. So that first line of defense, we call that your innate immunity. 
And this is a, a range of protective mechanisms that we're all born with. So the innate immune system provides nonspecific protection against various pathogens like viruses. You've heard a lot about that lately. Uh, bacteria, fungi, protozoans, and even worms. Yes, can you believe it? Worms. <laughs> that sounds gross. But a number of defense mechanisms serve the innate immune system, and that includes physical barriers such as the skin, uh, chemical barriers such as antimicrobial proteins that harm or destroy invaders, and then cells that attack foreign cells and body cells harboring infectious agents. So before we move on to that second line of defense, I want to delve a little bit deeper into this defense mechanism we call the innate immunity. So the skin, it's an external barrier made from layers of cells serving as a protective barrier to infection. And not only does the skin provide a protective barrier to keep invaders out, but it also secretes fatty acids and enzymes. So the fatty acid oleic acid can kill bacteria, certain bacteria, while the enzyme lysozyme can break down the outer wall of certain bacteria. And then internally, mucous membrane linings of like the respiratory tract, the gastrointestinal tract, the urogenital tracts, they provide a protective barrier of cells that are constantly being renewed. And so that membrane traps small particles to prevent them from attaching to cells. And we call this a microbiome. Now, maybe you've heard of that. Science discovered these around 2012. They found that they exist for a number of areas of the body. And it's like your body ecology. It's like all these critters, I call them critters, uh, that are there to protect us. And there's a microbiome for the skin, as we've talked about here. There's an ocular microbiome, that's for your eyes. There's an oral microbiome, that's for your mouth. A respiratory microbiome, that's for your lungs and your sinuses and all that connection there. There's a urogenital microbiome, a vaginal microbiome, and even a gut microbiome. A lot of people have been hearing about the gut, right? So these microbiomes are fascinating at how they, uh, all these critters, the good critters who try to protect us from the bad critters. And so if you wanna learn more about this, uh, we'll include this link, but on the uh, accesscompletewellness.com website, homepage. I have my some of my favorite uh, blogs in the, about the middle section of that. And, and there is one there called, why does a microbiome matter to me? Well, now you know, <laughs> because you've got a few and they need, they're there to protect you. And so it is important to understand um, the role that they play uh, in your life. So again, we're going to uh, make sure we send that to you. And what that article talks about is how we use body talk of the work I do in my practice, um, which I can do remotely. It doesn't it's only have to be done in person. Um, but how I use that to support addressing so many of these um, negative critters um, that might be in various parts of the body. So let's move along. So another crucial aspect of your innate immunity is that chemical barriers to infection. So when microbes penetrate the body's protective barriers and enter the internal tissues, um, they encounter a variety of chemical substances that, that attempt to prevent their growth. And so there are a lot of mechanisms and cells by which chemicals work to harm or destroy um, these invaders. And these processes go beyond the scope of, of what we're gonna discuss here. Um, just know that they're continually on the lookout for foreign invaders and they're ready to strike at any time. Again, your body's immune system is absolutely amazing at fighting things off. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes you don't even know it. I mean, it, it's happening right now. And that's not a bad thing, that's a great thing. And so, you know, we wanna put a little more faith in that defense system and what it's doing for us every day. 
So early induced responses are the final process of that innate immunity, and we're going to discuss that right now. So many of you are familiar with this response, but you may have only heard of it in the danger it can pose, uh, and that's called inflammation. <laughs> now, inflammation can eliminate infection or, or actually hold it in check until specific acquired immune responses have time to develop. So isn't that cool how they all work together like that? So infection often results in tissue damage, which may trigger an inflammatory response. So signs of inflammation are things like this. Maybe you've experienced some uh, pain, swelling, redness, fever. Um, these are induced by chemicals released uh, by something called macrophages. Now, macrophages sounds like a big fancy name. Um, they're just professional microbe eaters. And what's a microbe? A microbe is a parasite, fungus, bacteria, virus. So a macrophage is a professional microbe eater. And so inflammation is actually a healthy, protective immune response. Again, till that acquired immunity builds up. However, when you have chronic inflammation, and that exists in the body, then unfortunately, chronic disease is likely to develop. So now let's move on to that second line of defense, which we call acquired immunity. So first we had innate, and now we have acquired. So acquired is, is named that because you're not born with this form of immunity. It's acquired through exposure to different pathogens. So that line of defense is acquired from things like exposure to an infection or disease. Yeah, actual exposure to it. Or another person's antibodies is another way that you can be um, building that acquired immune system. Now, these are all terms that are starting to be common everyday language, aren't they? It used to be just scientists and doctors knew what it was. And now we're all starting to learn, oh, oh, antibodies, right? We all are learning about these things. So um, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So, um, so let's learn a little bit more about how all this works together. So, you know, it's, it's well established that persons who contract certain diseases and survive generally do not catch those illnesses again. That's pretty neat, and I'm gonna explain how come that happens. So this is made possible through that mechanism of acquired immunity. So when your immune system is exposed to a pathogen, it learns to recognize it and can make your immune system better equipped to fight off that type of germ the next time that you're exposed to it. Isn't that neat? <laughs> that, I mean, that's fascinating. Um, so anyway, so acquired immunity is dependent on the specialized white blood cells known as lymphocytes. Now, I bet you seventh grade life science is starting to trickle into your brain again. And you're going, oh, yeah, I learned about those, those lymphocytes, those little, those little cells that go beat stuff up. Yeah, I remember that. I remember. So these are the cells that are responsible for the body's ability to distinguish and then react to an almost infinite number of different foreign substances. Isn't that fascinating? So those lymphocytes originate from stem cells. We've heard a lot about stem cells now. I tell you, science has come a long way. Um, so stem cells in, in the bone marrow, and they can travel and multiply in response to appropriate stimulation. So maybe you've heard of some more terms so you didn't know how smart you were. T cells or B cells. So these are referring to different types of lymphocytes. And so both the T and B cells, um, they recognize and help eliminate uh, foreign molecules, um, but they do it in a different way. So, I mean, obviously, I mean, if they were all the same, they'd be called the same, right? So D T as in Tom and B as in boy cells. So, we also want to talk about these receptor molecules because this is another fascinating story. Where do you hear how this all connects? So lymphocytes are distinguished from other cells by their capacity 
to recognize foreign molecules by means of receptor molecules. Yeah, let me explain what that is. So a receptor molecule, it's a special protein and its shape, the shape of it is designed to fit a foreign molecule. Now, I just think about that statement and go, if there are millions of these foreign molecules, how would my receptor sites even know how to have the shape for that thing to connect to? Again, fascinating intelligence within our body, right? So you want to think of these molecules as like a key that fits into a lock. That's what these receptor molecules are about. So any foreign material that binds specifically to a receptor molecule is called an antigen. And antigens include molecules found on invading microorganisms, such as viruses, I know you know what that is now, <laughs> bacteria, protozoans, fungi, um, and as well as molecules located on the surface of foreign substances, things like pollen, dust, or even transplanted tissue. So certain antigens can induce an immune response when they bind to a receptor molecule. So let's talk about something that is really cool to me. Now, I really like this slide because that reminds me of those little um, rock candy when I was a kid. That's what I think that looks like. But anyway, so one of the many incredible abilities of the immune system is that it keeps a record. Yeah, a record of every microbe it's ever defeated. That's very cool. So this enables that immune system to recognize and destroy the microbe quickly if it enters the body again before it can multiply and make you feel sick. So now I get it, some infections like the flu and the common cold, they have to be fought many times because so many different viruses or strains, you've heard that before, of the same type of virus can cause these illnesses and the same symptoms. So therefore, catching a cold or flu from one virus does not always give you immunity against all the others. So, but this record keeping is how we acquire immunity. And so the immune system is triggered by a small amount of an illness to produce antibodies. And this enables the body to quickly launch an immune attack to then kill the virus for future exposure and hopefully protection. So what we're exposed to actually dictates our acquired immunity. For example, where you live, maybe vaccinations you got at birth, uh, your exposure to different environmental conditions, all impact our ability to fight off various diseases. So if you've ever experienced allergies when visiting someplace for the first time, um, this could be due to the exposure of something your system is not already familiar with. So next time you visit, you may not have the same reaction. Uh, and for that, you can thank your acquired immune system. So because, you know, we're all exposed to different pathogens, we all have unique immune defenses. So what that means is that your immune system actually varies from person to person. I can remember my dad, he was a doctor, my mom a nurse, and uh, my dad never got a flu shot, ever, ever, ever got a flu shot. Now think about it, he was exposed to lots of people all the time. And so he had a very strong immune system. Now, I am not by any stretch of the imagination encouraging you to go expose yourself to a lot of people, for this purpose because there are other reasons why immune systems can be compromised um, and we're going to talk about that but i just want to show you that how person to person right uh we all have different immunities some people get exposed to things and don't get sick and other people do and they do get sick so while we have the similar innate responses such as that skin barrier that we talked about our that acquired immunity can be really different and here's one of the reasons for it. And this is where, again, science starts to pull 
all the pieces together. Like there's so many research studies out there, but when you start to pull, put the picture of the puzzle together, it's fascinating to see um, how we're so blessed to even be able to figure some of this stuff out um, with so many recent studies, right? But one of the recent studies they've done um, found that our history, our history and our environment, like where, with whom we live, that kind of environment, are responsible for 60 to 80, 60 to 80 percent of the differences between individual immune systems. Interesting. So while genetics then accounts for the rest, okay? So this is what we call, maybe you've heard this term, everybody's throwing these big terms around lately, epigenetics. Yes, so 60 to 80% of the difference between your immune system and my immune system is epigenetics. Well, yes, I have a blog you can learn more about that on. <laughs> AccessCompleteWellness.com. It's another one on the home page in the middle section, and it's called, Is Your Environment Making You Ill? The Epigenetic Factor. Because that difference is huge. 60 to 80 percent so where you are in your environment who you live with right when i realize you know people maybe are, are dealing with autoimmune diseases or, or things like that you know you have to ask yourself what in your environment might be leading to that right who are you trying to defend yourself against right because we're going to talk about that in a second but that's when we go into that overactive immune system piece. So is your environment making you ill? Interesting blog out on the homepage, accesscompletewellness.com. But let's move along to that overactive immune system. Now this can result from a number of conditions um, like allergies and then autoimmune disease. And allergic diseases include allergies to foods, uh, medication, um, stinging insects, um, anaphylaxis, uh, hay fever, sinus infections, asthma, hives, dermatitis, eczema. That's quite a few things, right? And these conditions result when that immune system makes an overly strong response to allergens. Overly strong. So, so autoimmune disease um, includes things like MS, um, autoimmune thyroid disease, type 1 diabetes, lupus, um, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, systemic vasculitis. Um, these are all examples of autoimmune diseases. And so when the immune system mounts a response against normal components of the body, um, autoimmune disease is to blame. So it's basically like your body is fighting itself very important to think that through. Your body is fighting itself. Your body's defense system is on the defense within itself. There's something to think about. But what about the underactive immune system? All right, so an underactive immune system, another name for this, maybe you've heard of it, immunodeficiency. So, Basically, this makes people vulnerable to infections and it can be life-threatening in severe cases. So immunodeficiency can be inherited um, and it can include conditions uh, such as um, common variable immunodeficiency or CVID, C-V-I-D, um, and then severe combined immunodeficiency, SCID, um, so lots of different deficiency scenarios here. And this immunodeficiency can be caused actually by another disease, uh, such as HIV AIDS um, or even certain types of cancer. So that's underactive immune system. So what are we going to do about this? What can we do? Well, the good news is there's a lot you can do. And we're going to talk about things you've probably heard a lot lately, but you've got a more in-depth understanding of the immune system now and how it works to protect us. 
So I want you to take a look at ways to strengthen it, but I also want you to be really appreciative of what that system is doing for you. Um, it can, it is really doing a lot for you every day, even if you are ill or not feeling uh, as good as you could today. Um, it's doing a lot. You could be feeling a lot worse. Uh, so I would encourage you to, you know, thank your immune system once in a while. It's a pretty thankless job what it's got to do there. Um, but the ability to, to support the immune system is complex and it's always under study. Um, they're always researching it. And, and this is due to the fact that the immune system is a system. Hear that. It's a system. So it requires balance. It requires harmony among its parts, like an orchestra. If one guy's out of tune, <laughs> the whole song's messed up. Do you get what I'm saying? So all of it has to work together. And that interconnectedness of the immune response is extraordinarily complex. Again, give your immune system a pat on the back for what it does for you. So we're going to take a look at the effects of lifestyle that are you know, being researched to give your immune system support. But just let's just take this picture for a second and, and, and make sure we don't miss an obvious one, right? Washing your hands often. So I have a little picture in the right-hand corner, and I want to share with you about it. Um, so I, I use a line of, of hand purifiers and disinfectants, um, disinfectant cleaner, um, and, and it's called Thieves, T-H-I-E-V-E-S, you can see it on screen. Thieves is a product line from Young Living Essential Oils. So they're the leader in essential oils. And um, I want to share with you why I use this. Number one, it smells great. Uh, number two, uh, it doesn't dry out my skin. Yay, team. Not only that, it supports the skin microbiome. So maybe I mentioned it, you know, we, maybe I didn't. Uh, you've heard of like antibiotics, right, against life and uh, antibiotics, those are good to go kill bad bacteria. And then you've got probiotics, and that's for life. Those are there to replenish the good bacteria. And I've talked about the critters. You've got critters on the skin, in the gut, all over the place that are there to help defend you. Well, why do we now need to take probiotics? And that's because we all learned from science that antibiotics weren't only always just killing the bad guys. Sometimes they killed some of the good guys. They knocked out some of the good bacteria, right? So what I'm going with this is, is that sometimes that happens with those antibacterial soaps too. Now, I'm not suggesting not to use antibacterial soaps, but what I am suggesting is that there are some uh, soaps that support the skin microbiome, meaning they support the healthy critters while taking care of the not so healthy critters. So, but let me tell you about this Thieves product line because it's really an interesting um, background, the story on it. So, uh, in France, uh, during the 15th century, um, thieves, okay, robbers is what I'm trying to say, robbers, they would sneak into graveyards and they'd rob from the dead and dying people. That's kind of sick, isn't it? Kind of low. <laughs> and the legend says that they protected themselves by creating a special aromatic combination uh, composed of clove, rosemary, and some other botanicals. And so I, I heard a version of the story, that, and the rumor that I heard was that, that these robbers one time, I guess they got caught and the authorities like apparently said, we'll give you leniency in your punishment if you tell us how come you didn't die from the people you just robbed who died from what they died from. And so rumor is the, you know, gave up this, this recipe. And so anyway, so these products use clove and cinnamon bark, lemon oil, eucalyptus radiata, and rosemary essential oils uh, to help out there. So if you do not um, use Young Living essential oils, that's okay. Uh, there are a lot of people that do. So if you know anybody that um, uses them, you might get in touch with them for this, um, these products here, these Steve's products, again, it won't dry your skin out. Secondarily, um, and if you don't know anybody at all, then uh, we can connect you uh, and help you get those products that you're looking for there.
Now, as we watch this lady or this uh, person here washing their hands, I got to share this video with you. You're going to love this video because uh, you're seeing it today. And if you're not seeing this today, you're going to start. <laughs> You're going to start seeing this and it's going to crack you up. So turn up your volume. I've got my volume up. Uh, I think I'm plugged through, so you should hear this. But if you can't, turn up your volume. Check out what this nurse has to say. Okay, so I wanted to get on here and do a quick little thing here. I'm seeing a lot of people out in public wearing gloves right now. That's great. If you want to wear gloves, you know, that's all fine and well. You absolutely can. But I want to remind you of a little thing called cross-contamination. So let's say I'm in my car, I'm at Meijer, I'm getting ready to go into the store, so I put my gloves on, all right? And then I grab my cell phone. For this purpose, this little piece of cardboard here is gonna be my cell phone. So now I go into Meijer, walking around, I got my phone, maybe it's in my pocket, or maybe it's on the cart, okay? And I've grabbed my wipes and I've cleaned off my cart and I've cleaned everything off, but you know, I still have my gloves on. So here now I'm in Meijer and I'm getting my groceries and I reach for something and um, you know, let's just say I reach for toilet paper, right? If you can find any, get some toilet paper. Well, um, I take my toilet paper and I put it in my cart. And now if you can see, I have all these germs on my hands from my toilet paper, but it's in my cart, and it, but it's on my gloves, that's fine, right? It's on my gloves. Well, you know, but now I'm walking along and my phone rings. So I've now touched my hands together a couple of times and I reach for my phone and oh, um, I have a text message from my husband telling me to get more uh, chicken. We need chicken tonight for dinner. So let me text him back. Okay, honey, I got it, I'll get us some chicken. Okay, so I put my phone back in my cart and continue reaching for things continue getting groceries and uh, you know I just keep touching everything oh my nose itches here let me itch my nose okay um oh now my phone's ringing it's my mom she needs me to get her something hi hello hi mom what can I do for you oh hi hi oh my goodness look at look at all this bacteria oh but now here it's okay it's totally fine because I'm wearing my gloves I have my gloves on I'm so safe in my gloves right and uh, you know I'm done I've got I've paid I'm at the grocery store I'm all done I've paid my phone's back in my pocket I get to my car I reach for my car door handle and then I you know I'm, I'm all done with these gloves and I don't want these dirty gloves in my car right so what should I do with my gloves oh let's see you take them off appropriately and they belong in the trash in the trash can people instead of putting them in the parking lot next to your vehicle, please put them in the trash. So now your gloves are off, your hands are clean, you're in your car, you're safe, right? But oh, your phone rings again. Oh no, let me pick up my phone here. Oh, hello, hello. Look, this is called cross-contamination. There's no point in wearing gloves if you're not gonna wash your hands every time you touch something. There's no point, friends. So. Do whatever makes you feel safe but remember there is some science here and all this fear is just manifesting people into being crazy and does not acting very smart so one go ahead wear your gloves but you need to clean your hands all the time don't touch your face don't touch your dirty phone look at this dirty disgusting phone that got all over my face secondly throw your gloves in the trash they do not belong in the parking lot on the ground all right I'm done. I'm done with my craziness. Bye. Okay, I don't know about you all, but I thought that was hysterical. <laughs> so anyway, see, those ladies are laughing too. They're cracking up here in this picture. So anyway, so your first defense, you know you're going to see people doing that in the parking lot now. I know you know that because I'm seeing it happen. And yeah, oh wait, you, you might have, some even you might have done it. You're going to be very aware now. So good job. That nurse did a great job. So anyway, your, your first defense uh, is to live a healthy lifestyle. So what are they always saying about everything going on right now? Like be healthy, wash your hands. Like prevention is the best way. Prevention is the best way to deal with this. Uh, so not only will your immune system benefit, Every other part of your body is going to benefit from some of these tips. So let me let me share them with you. Uh, don't smoke. That's not a great thing for you. 
uh, eat a diet that's high in fruits and veggies and and because uh, if you do that, you're going to start having better digestion and you're going to start having better gut critters if you do more fruits and veggies. Um, exercising regularly is good. Uh, maintaining that healthy weight. Um, if you do drink alcohol, drink it in moderation. Um, make sure you're getting good sleep and uh, take the steps to avoid infection, right? We just talked about that. Start washing those hands in some good stuff that's not going to kill all the bad all the bacteria just the yucky stuff um oh yeah and try to minimize stress so these are the tips for boosting your immune system so now let's go into a little more depth on how this uh, all comes together for you so you know it's been well established that people who are malnourished are more vulnerable to infectious disease um and and some people don't even realize they are malnourished. Um, they have digestion issues and, you know, trained people like myself and a lot of my colleagues, we can see it in someone, but sometimes if that's all you've known all your life, um, you don't know what, what normal is, right? So another group of individuals who are really susceptible to um, micronutrient malnutrition are the elderly, yeah. And so, you know, we don't know if that's because, you know, older people tend to eat less and less often and less variety. You know, is that what's happening? Maybe they're not able to get out and get some of the healthier vegetables and fruits like you see in this picture. Um, so I'm sure it also has something to do with that whole improper digestion piece as well. And I have a number of webinars that talk about digestion and how to improve it. <coughs> so micronutrient deficiencies are things like this um, deficiencies of zinc selenium iron copper folic acid uh, vitamins a uh, vitamin b6 vitamin c and e as well e is in edward so all of these can alter immune responses so we want to make sure those deficiencies are addressed I gotta tell you something, the best way to get your nutrients is from your food. It's just difficult if your digestion's off, if you're constipated, if you have gas, bloating, uh, heartburn, if you have all any or all of those things I just mentioned, your digestion's not working very well, um, which means you're not absorbing your foods very well. So if you suspect that your diet's not providing you um, with all your micronutrient needs, um, and let me share with you a special thing we're gonna do for viewers of this uh, webinar. Um, we're gonna give you a, access to a free um, report, individualized for you to kind of guide you on this. And I'll give you some of those details in a moment. Um, and, and let me share with you you know, we're about to, we're also about to do, talk about stress, chronic stress, and how that affects your immune system. But uh, let me show you some, some uh, budget-wise um, supplement uh, packages that we put together special for this um, presentation. Because what, what we're seeing is that, you know, your immune system is affected by not getting proper nutrients. Um, and then stress uh, emotional stress especially is is part of the picture as well we're going to talk about that next so we've got a couple of packages um, and we're uh, you know available to work with you uh, any of you on these um, this one is more of an herbal package this first one um, this digest forte um, looking at of course supporting healthy digestion so if you aren't getting all the food you need or you're not able you're not eating organic um, this is a way to kind of get that gastrointestinal tone healthier. Um, and it also, at the same time, um, helps with a normal response to environmental stress. And then the Epimune um, Complex is a vegetarian supplement um, support um, to help, you know, bring about, you know, some strength to that immune system. And then that Neviton Forte is that thing we bring in to kind of help calm the nerves, um, and, and kind of help with um, easing the effects of the occasional stress. Now, if you, know, if you don't know if you're stressed right now, 
I'm going to tell you, you probably are, uh, because this is an unprecedented time in, in our world. Um, this is another package. Again, they're, they're both effective um, packages. Um, this one would be a little less um, on the uh, veg vegetarian side of things. Um, with this, the, we've got a couple of products. The first one, Rodeol and Shishandra, um, for working on temporary stress. Um, thymex um, is huge for supporting the thymex gland. That's actually the one I like um, the most. Um, and then Zypan, um, which is phenomenal for helping to support digestion and make sure that those nutrients are actually getting absorbed. So um, just a couple of suggestions of some products that um, might be helpful. Now let's jump into this stress piece because this is, this is a huge thing. And so, you know, stress is common in our society today, even before things hit recently. Um, our busy schedules, our packed social calendars um, demand more from us than any other time in history. Um, and you can see this lady, you know, this medical worker, I mean, you can see, you know, the stress in this picture. Um, there's other stressors though, right now, especially financial burdens um, and anxiety, all contribute to a chronic stress response. And so when we experience stress, you may not know this, but hormones are released in the body. And these stress hormones, they are helpful temporarily. So maybe you remember back in science class in school and you learned about, you know, adrenaline and cortisol and you learned about, you had to, you know, caveman or whatever they talked about, had to run from the tiger, you know, cause he was going, that was, that was his stress back in the day, death by tiger eating. Okay, well, we don't have death by tiger eating today, hopefully in most of the world, um, but yet, we all forgot to tell our hormones and our stress system that. And so now today, you know, not getting a work project done on time or, or not doing well on a school exam, um, you know, not finding toilet paper. <laughs> These are all things that have now become the new death by tiger eating stress response on our nervous systems. When those hormones are all out of whack, it's going to bring down that immune system. And so the result of chronic stress, you know, always in that fight or flight mode, is gonna lead to a never ending list of diseases and illnesses, ranging from depression to heart attack to you name it. And so during times of stress, that immune system will be inhibited. It is fact. Science has documented this over and over. And so regularly participating in stress-reducing activities is not only beneficial for your overall health, but also for your general immunity. Um, so there's a lot, I'm sure there's a lot we're all learning. You know, what lessons can we learn from what we're going through today to move us out of this stress mode. Um, and I gotta tell you, uh, the stress of things that are going on in the world today is impacting the immune function, which is the very system that needs to be strong because of the thing that's causing the fears in the world today. <laughs> so this is a vicious cycle we gotta put a stop to. Again, your immune system it didn't just, it didn't stop figuring out how to function just because a virus showed up. Your immune system is incredibly intricate, but there's a role you have to play so that it's strong enough to do its job. It knows how to do its job. Do you know how to support it? So let's talk about some of those things. Um, we're going to share with you these links, but let me give you some feedback on a couple of things. And you might make a note of any of these that sound really interesting to you. One is, is called the cortices technique. It's a brain balancing technique. It balances left and right brain communication. That can only help with mental clarity, with the brain communicating to the rest of the body on how to do things. So write that down if you 
think that's interesting. You'll have a link to it. Um, the Tahiti vacation relaxation pose. This is a little video that I did a long time ago, <laughs> but it's the equivalent of four hours of sleep in 15 minutes. Now, there's probably not many of you out there who wouldn't benefit from learning what this technique looks like. So 15 minutes of time you devote and you get the equivalent of four hours of sleep. Now, for my type A people out there, no, you can't do it twice a day and get eight hours of sleep and stop sleeping. That would be a bad idea. Okay, so let me cover it now. Don't even ask the question. Uh, so Tahiti vacation relaxation pose. Guess what's happening in this particular relaxation? We're addressing outright adrenal cortisol imbalance. That's exactly what the point of the exercise is. So not only are you going to get the equivalent of four hours of sleep in 15 minutes, we're going to start addressing those stress hormones at the same time. So look for that Tahiti vacation relaxation pose. Now, a while back, I did a webinar on anxiety. You might want to go to our website, accesscompletewellness.com, and find that webinar and learn a little bit more there. Now, we have a number of other services that we offer, and they can all be offered long distance. Um, we offer an emotional regulation technique that pretty much permanently uh, helps get rid of negative emotions, whether it's anxiety, fear, panic, whatever, um, in about a 30-minute session. Um, and uh, phenomenal. We call that um, emotional regulation. So we'll send you that link too. Um, aroma freedom technique for those of you who use um, essential oils. Um, we use Young Living essential oils for that, pro that, that uh, offering. And um, we use that to help bring a calming down on a situation that um, is negative or alarming to you. Of course, body talk sessions also um, a phenomenal way to help address um, some of these uh, stressful times. So let me move on and let me tell you, we're about to wrap up. Let me show you what, we, uh, what we've put together to try to help out right now. We had a lot of free services that we're showing you. And uh, let me show you uh, something very exciting that's coming up. So um, this is my favorite of all time. We, uh, I call this the Swiss Army Knife of Wellness. This is our Body Talk Access class. It is designed to be, to be uh, taught to anybody. Um, but the great news is we are now allowed to teach online for a limited time. So uh, I refer to it as learn it in one day, use it for a lifetime. So uh, whenever you might have experienced the supply chain was kind of shutting down a little while ago, uh, maybe you couldn't access whatever for your health, including um, even supplements and things like that. Guess what? Body Talk Access students had their class material. Again, with the knowledge in your head and your hands, um, what we're going to do is teach you these amazing techniques. Uh, you see that little brain balancing on the high wire? Yeah, and that's the cortices technique. In fact, we're giving you that for free in our links, so you're going to get to try that out. Um, switching, that is amazing stress threshold reset. So while we can't address how much stress is coming in at us in the world today, what we can do is help our body better handle what it's dealing with. Um, there's no system I know of like what I'm showing you here. Hydration, this isn't about you are gonna, we're gonna teach you how to drink eight glasses of water. That is not at all what this is about. This is about, oh my gosh, uh, you're in the desert and you only have a cup of water left for the next eight hours, what are you gonna do? This technique is gonna help your cells use that water better that it, 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 there's a whole lot to it, but it's a lot more than we're going to teach you how to drink water. It's nothing like that. Um, body chemistry. Look at that yucky handshake down there. Actually, it's quite pretty, um, all those pretty colors. But as we saw from the nurse, yeah, imagine, I'm going to tell you something. Imagine if you knew that this technique was actually something that could help address viruses. Because 
we all know that even before now, whenever a virus was in the picture, we didn't really have a lot of tools that could address it, right? Got the flu, your doctor said, go home, drink plenty of fluids, let your body work through it, right? This technique actually helps to support your body to ward things off. Actually, the founder behind this body talk work, Dr. John Veltime, he was actually dying from Epstein-Barr virus um, and was introduced to this tool. And um, he is alive to tell the story today. Um, so very powerful technique, and it can be used anytime, anywhere by anyone, including kids. Uh, we just had a class had a few kids join us for it. It was a lot of fun. This reciprocals is a full body balancing, you know, almost like a chiropractor without a chiropractor. And I don't take away from chiropractors because it's definitely not cracking your back. Um, but it is definitely aligning left and right side, getting things um, more in tune. And then our infamous fast aid technique. I cannot tell you the value of that one. In fact, I might even... Well, I have some testimonials I'll share with you. But anyway, let me tell you about this. So this um, online Body Talk Access course, um, it's eight hours, but trust me, you're not gonna get bored. It's very interactive. Uh, we're gonna teach you six powerful techniques so that in the event that you're exposed to people that are sick or you need additional support because of stress, you're gonna have tools. You don't need supplements. You don't need anything else. <laughs> You just, you'll have this to help give you that support you need um, in the event. It's going to get a 30, 38 page full color manual, goes with it. Uh, certificate of completion as a body talk access technician. You'll also be really qualified and proficient to perform these techniques on your family and your friends. All right, here's our testimonials. So this is one just from a, our uh, class we just did. Um, so it says, Thank you, by the way. It's, uh, I do an amazing job teaching the Body Talk class. Uh, this patient, very encouraging, especially when we ask questions. She goes over the information several times so that it sinks in deep. One of my favorite things that she used, she had us do the, was practice the technique again and again. Each time she taught a new part, she had us go back to the beginning and do the whole thing over. She wrapped up the class by having us do it on someone else. She was very thoughtful of our time and did not waste it at all. Lynn made what could have been a very complicated system feel very simple. She and Keith are organized with their communications with links and explanations of how to do technology. I highly recommend doing the class online. It was efficient, very easy to follow along with the camera access. Lynn was able to correct and connect with all the participants. Excellent use of a Saturday. So I thank her for that amazing testimonial. Here's some other ones. Uh, my daughter sprained her ankle on a soccer tournament. She tapped out, we tapped out the fast aid technique once and she was able to resume play for the rest of the weekend. You know, they were gonna go to urgent care. <laughs> Instead, they stopped by our house and we were able to help out there. I watched a calm come over my autistic son in seconds while the courtesies te technique was performed on him. This is invaluable. Some of you, you all are going to get the Courtesies Technique video uh, where you can watch it. Just so you know, uh, there's some nurses who use that and actually help people out of comas, that Courtesies Technique. Some of us feel like we've been in a coma. Um, what a miracle. I had a Charlie horse on my thigh over two weeks from a tennis injury. I was getting ready to set an appointment with my doctor when my friend tapped out Body Talk Access. It was better within a couple of hours. And I used to get some kind of cold or flu every season. Last year, started tapping out the body chemistry technique each time I encountered someone that was already sick. I have not had a cold since. What a value and savings to not have to go to the doctor. So those are some great options there. So um, let me tell you a little bit about what we're, what we're offering to you all. So um, what we're gonna do is we're going to also offer you as um, participants in this webinar, um, two consults. Um, supporting your digestion, immunity, and emotional support. So that's two consults there. Um, we're going to give you a multi-page report um, showing progress improvement um, before and after view. And uh, we're going to also help go over, give you an opportunity. Again, we talked about when people were not sure if like their, their nutrients were being absorbed. That's what this part's about. 
Um, we're going to give you an opportunity to review your symptoms that you've had for the past three months, um, mild to severe, and actually um, give you a report that's going to help the, match those symptoms to your major organ and organs and body systems to let you know um, where you might need to do some additional support. Um, this, uh, this consult and report is going to help display what your core body uh, weaknesses are, um, suggest some lifestyle changes. Uh, we're going to give you easy to follow recommendations. Um, and then you're going to get a full description of the recommendations for easy reference. So not only are we going to give you recommendations, we're going to tell you why we gave you those recommendations with an explanation. That's always helpful. I'm always more compliant when I know why I'm doing something. Um, and then, uh, of course, your findings are secure and, and they're completely under your control. So this immune support package, um, this is a $400 premium package, which includes the online Body Talk Access webinar. Learn it in a day, use it for a lifetime, plus the body system survey, the two consults and all that I just went over with you. But for now, for such a time as this, we're going to do all of that for you for $150. Um, for a limited time. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, let you know we have um, the next Body Talk Access interactive webinar. Um, check our website accesscompletewellness.com backslash upcoming events for a listing of all of these interactive classes. Our next one will be held on May 9th. Be sure to sign up for that. Also, our stroke prevention and education course, May 21st, eight o'clock, it is a webinar. Share this with family and friends. Of course, sign up yourself. Uh, always wanna sign up, register in advance, and then pass it along. There are many people out there that could actually avoid a stroke. Did you know 80% of strokes are preventable? So share this with somebody that might actually be concerned about that possibility in their life. So let us know if you have any questions. Here's the way to reach us. We want to thank you for the time that you've spent with us. We know that there are a lot of things pulling at your time and the fact that you chose time with us for this very important topic means a lot to us. So thank you so much for joining and have a wonderful rest of your week.